Good evening. Welcome, welcome to Cross of Christ uh, Lenten service. You may notice I don't look like Pastor Tim. My beard's a little longer than his. But anyway, he's feeling ill tonight, so we'll be trying to lead the service and help us join in together. So you may greet each other in, in Jesus' name. So. So we'll begin with our first hymn. rise. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I will go to, go to the altar of God. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor and miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Do you believe that the forgiveness from Jesus is coming from God? Yes. yes. In the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
You're forgiven all of your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Brandon was going to read for us. Hello? Joseph could not control himself before all those who stood by him. He cried, Make everyone go out from me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept aloud, so that the Egyptians heard it, and the household of Pharaoh heard. And Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, for they were dismayed at his presence. So Joseph said to his brothers, Come near to me, please. And they came near, and he said, I am your brother, Joseph, whom you saw sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves, because you, because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are yet five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve you, for you a remnant of, on earth and to keep alive for you and many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Jesus, Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me. Not tear me. You shall dwell in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children, and your children's children, and the flocks, your herds, and all that you have. There I will provide for you, for there are yet five years of famine to come, so that you and your household, and all that you have, do not come to poverty. And now your eyes see, and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that it is my mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father of all my honor in Egypt and of all that you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin, Benjamin's neck and wept. And Benjamin wept upon his neck. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. After that, his brothers talked with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, All right, we'll go to the next reading. Uh, Ephesians 4, 25 to 32. Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one of another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. This is the, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now rise for the gospel. Gospel comes from, chap, uh, from John chapter 13, 34 to 35. A new command. 
commandment I give to you that one that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You are all you also are to love one another. By this all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Well, we'll sing our next hymn now. I ask you to please pray with me. Lord God, may the words of my mouth, may the meditations, may the thoughts of all of our hearts, all of our minds, 
be pleasing in your sight. Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. All right. Tonight's Lenten theme. Of all the themes we've talked about so far and all the themes we'll have in this sermon series. This is the one Lenten theme that maybe seems like it's a bit of a stretch to call it a Lenten theme. Tonight we're going to talk about relationships. And I'm not so sure we often think of relationships as being a Lenten theme. But to be more specific, we're talking about the restoration of relationships tonight. We're talking about forgiveness and reconciliation. And those are very much Lenten themes. So tonight we see God's mercy in the restoration of relationships. And I think we all know relationships can be messy. Anytime you bring two sinful human beings into relationship with each other, there's bound to be conflict. Whether we're talking about relationships with coworkers, or neighbors, friends, family, our spouse. Conflict's an inevitable part of any relationship. In tonight's reading from Genesis, Joseph has conflict with his brothers. <coughs> but this is no ordinary conflict. This conflict began when his brothers plotted to kill Joseph. Then they had to change of heart, said, let's just beat him up, throw him in a well, see what happens. Then they saw slave traders had another change of heart, sold him as a slave. Joseph finds himself now as a slave in Egypt. At first, it's not too bad. God blesses Joseph, and all that he does, Joseph's master, Potiphar, takes notice of that. And so he treats Joseph well. But then his master's wife accuses Joseph of assaulting her. Now he's still in prison, where he'll be for several years. So we find Joseph's life in this huge mess. And it's all his brother's fault. And Joseph has a lot of time in prison to think about what his brothers did to him. And what he'd do to them if he ever saw them again. And yet... Even as Joseph finds himself in prison, God continues to bless Joseph. And eventually he's summoned to Pharaoh's court to interpret a dream. Pharaoh's pleased with Joseph's interpretation of the dream, and he has Joseph brought out of prison and then puts him in charge of all of Egypt. So his fortunes are completely reversed now. According to Joseph's interpretation of Pharaoh's dream, there's a famine. It means there's no food. But because Joseph knew the famine was coming, he was able to store up food in Egypt. Egypt has plenty of food to go around. Meanwhile, back home, land of Canaan, where Joseph's brothers and father live, there's no food. So Jacob sends his brothers down to Egypt for food. Can you imagine how Joseph must have felt the first time he saw his brothers after all of those years. He's had all this time to think about what he'd do, but what is he going to do? Well, first he decides to play a little game, have a little fun. He accuses his brothers of being spies, locks one of the brothers up in prison. See, the brothers made a mistake. They mentioned to Joseph, they don't recognize who Joseph is. They tell him that they have another brother back home, Benjamin. Benjamin would be the son of Rachel. That would be Joseph's mother. So Benjamin would be Joseph's only full blood brother. Remember, Jacob has sons with four different women. And so Joseph loves Benjamin very much. He wants to see him again. So this is what he says. He says, if you're not really spies, if you really have this brother back home that you claim to have, prove it. 
bring him with you the next time you come for more food. In the meantime, I'm going to keep your brother locked up in prison here. And he sells them their grain, sends them back home. But before they leave, he sneaks their money, the money they used to buy the grain, back into their bags. When they get home, the brothers already know there's no way dad's going to let us bring Benjamin to Egypt with us. So they figure the brother in prison, he's there for life. But they also find their money in the sacks. And they have no doubt if they go back to Egypt, they'll be accused of stealing that money. So they decide they're never going back to Egypt. But eventually they run out of food, right? And they have no choice. They have to go back to Egypt. Judah talks with his dad, talks with Jacob. Says, you have to let us bring Benjamin with us. This man down in Egypt said that if we don't bring Benjamin with us, he's going to lock us up in prison too. We'll probably die and we'll never bring back food for you to eat. So if you want food, if you want us back, you're going to have to let us take Ben with us. So Jacob consents. They go back to Egypt with Benjamin. Joseph releases the other brother out of prison. They have this huge feast. The brothers also had brought back extra money so they wouldn't be accused of stealing. But Joseph insists, no, I got my money that you paid me. This must be a gift from God. Enjoy it. It's yours. He then sells them more grain, sends them on their way, but this time he sneaks a silver cup in Benjamin's sack. And then as they're going back home, Joseph sends his soldiers after them, and they accuse the brothers of stealing this silver cup. Soldiers search all of the brothers' goods, and they find the cup in Benjamin's sack. And now the brothers are completely devastated because they know their dad will never forgive them if they lose Benjamin. So they run back to Joseph. And they plead for Benjamin's life. Judah even says, let me take his place. And now Joseph finally has his moment, right? All these years, thinking about what his brothers did to him. Now he can finally get his revenge. And you know, stealing the ruler of Egypt's cup, that's a, a crime punishable by now. But Joseph doesn't seek revenge. Instead, he has mercy on him. He reveals himself to his brothers, and he forgives them. But he does more than that, and this is the important thing we want to talk about. More than just forgiving his brothers, he reconciles with them. Joseph restores his relationship with his brothers. You see, to forgive means to cancel a debt. And you can easily forgive, you can easily cancel a debt without having to continue that relationship. You can forgive but never talk to them again. But to reconcile, to restore a relationship, means you're going to continue in that relationship despite the fact that those people hurt you. And that is what Joseph does for his brothers. He has them go back home, find their dad, and bring him with them, and they're all going to live with Joseph in Egypt the rest of their lives. Joseph's brothers had done a terrible thing to him. But instead of seeking revenge, Joseph, out of mercy, forgives them, and more than that, reconciles with them, restores that relationship, continues his relationship with his brothers despite what they did to him. You know, sin has caused many a broken relationship in this world. Most significant of all of those broken relationships would be man's relationship with God. Going all the way back to when Adam and Eve first ate that fruit in the garden. You know, it's been more than just a few years. And God has had a lot of time to think about what we've done think about what he'd do if he ever saw us again. 
But God, he's not a God of vengeance. He's a God of mercy. And so, instead of just sitting up in heaven, thinking about all the evil we've done and being mad about it, and plotting his revenge if we ever came back, God came back to us. He became a man. He went to the cross. On the cross, Jesus, through his death, not only forgives our sins, but he reconciles us. He restores our relationship with God the Father. God desires a relationship with you that will last forever. And through Jesus' death on the cross, that relationship is completely restored. You know, as long as we find ourselves living in a simple world, we're bound to experience broken relationships in our lives. As we live in a world filled with broken relationships, we find comfort in knowing the most vital of our relationships, our relationship with God has been fully restored through Jesus' death on the cross. And now as those who've had that relationship restored, we now seek to forgive others when they hurt us, as Jesus has forgiven us. And when possible, and I know it's not always, but when possible, to seek to restore and reconcile broken We continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue, you may be seated, we continue with our offering. God, we approach your throne of grace today with broken relationships. Lord, in your mercy. When we have alienated ourselves from others due to corrupting talk, put words in our mouths that foster reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy. When we have alienated ourselves from others due to falsehood, help us to speak the truth in love with our neighbor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. When we have alienated ourselves from others due to bitterness and anger, renew a, light, a right spirit within us to work toward peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. When we, when we have alienated ourselves from others due to a refusal to forgive, soften our hearts so, so that we may forgive as you have forg forgiven us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We praise you that while we were yet sinners, you still loved us and sent Christ to die for us. Re reconciling us to you, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In view of your mercy, lead us by your spirit so that we may build one another up by extending your grace to others. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear your prayer. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lord, in your mercy. We continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon us with favor and give us his peace. Amen. Uh, we'll continue with our final hymn. So we have a few announcements. He wanted us to mention that uh, youth will be working on a project for the local nursing homes this Sunday, school hour this su coming Sunday, and that uh, we'll ha we have um, Holy Week services. We still have a Wednesday service next week, but uh, on Holy Week, of course, it's um, April 6th at 6 p.m. is um, Monday, Thursday would be, the, um, is that not the Seder, Seder meal? Okay, and then Friday, the 7th at 7 is Good Friday, and then Easter Sunday the 9th at 9 a.m. for Easter Sunday service and a brunch that we're having at that point. Let's see. Voters meeting is the 2nd of April, so make sure we have that on your calendar. That's immediately after church service. Um, good. Um, what's the Sunday? Palm Sunday, thank you. <laughs> And we, uh, we do have one more Wednesday night service coming up next week. Uh, do we have any other announcements? Go in peace and serve the Lord. And we have refreshments this evening in, in the fellowship hall also.